My son loves to play this game on his Apple iPad and he's really good at it. It's called Sneaky Sasquatch and I went and had a look at their website. But what surprised me was what they do with their mobile menu on the mobile. So here we have the website and when you click the mobile menu, it kind of slides down. And it gave me this idea for like an off canvas menu or a reveal container without it being a pop up widget or an off canvas widget. What I like about it is that you have all your content. When you click it, it kind of reveals more, but you can still slide up and down. And I wanted to replicate that and I have and the code is in the video description. It's really simple and easy to apply. So let's do it. So here's the page that I've already built out inside of Elemental and the desktop view, you don't get that drop down, just like on their website as well. If you're viewing it on a desktop, you would not see the drop down. What you would have is your logo and your menu in the left and you might have social sharing icons or some other details, call to action button, subscribe, whatever you want. When you go to the tablet, it still kind of looks the same, but it's what you do when you get to the mobile. You can have as many containers as you want on the page and a footer, but when you go to the top, to the header, and you click this icon, did you notice that? It kind of scrolls down, and I did a little bit more than what they did, because in their drop down, you just get the menu and social sharing icons. Whereas in my one, I went and added in a subscribe form as well. Again, like I said, really easy to do. So on this page, we just have three containers, and they're all the same, really. Just have a container, we have a heading, and then I went and added in three images, and the, image, the container is set to be a row, so that's why they are side by side. The most important thing, that you have to do for every page, and that's the, probably the compromise you gotta do here. Every single page, the very first container that will come after the header, because don't forget, you're gonna have like a header template. Every single first container, you must add the CSS ID move me. You don't have to call it move me, all right? You could call it what you want. I just called it move me, and you'll see it in the code, so it's instantly recognizable. But every first container on every page where you want this to work has to have move me. If you do not have move me, it ain't going to work, okay? It's all part of the code I've built. Now let's go and have a look at the header. This has been built using a parent container and a child container. And the reason for the child container will become clear in a moment. So I have a parent container and it's currently set to be a full width. I might have set some gaps. You can decide how you're going to justify it with regards to your content. And in the advanced tab, I've just added in a bit of padding. There is nothing else added here with the ID or the class or anything like that. It's just basically a parent container. Inside of that parent container, I added in a logo icon. Again, you go and set your size, your colors, whatever you want. Just drop in a logo. Then I dropped in a HTML widget. And that's where the magic happens. But we're going to come back onto the HTML after I've explained the components. Then also into here, I went and added in a nav bar icon. When I say nav bar, it's just basically an icon and I changed the description. I just went over here, went and selected bars, added that in, and then I messed around with the size of it. Again, decide what you want to do. Now, the reason it's grayed out is because when you go to the advanced tab, you will see down here that in responsive, this will not be visible on the desktop or the tablet. This is only for the mobile. Please remember on the desktop and tablet, you would see the normal menu. If you wanted this to kick in on the desktop or the tablet, just go and adjust your responsiveness and the HTML code, which again, I will show you in a moment. I hope everything so far is pretty clear. Parent container for your header, logo, and we added in another icon that will only be visible on the mobile. There's no need to see it on the desktop. I also went and added in a child container. And this is where the top bit gets a bit messy because we're obviously viewing in the desktop. This child container sits to the right of the logo and the navbar icon, which you won't see until you get to the mobile. And this contains a WordPress menu and you would style it out. We've got social sharing icons, style it out. We've got a heading, style it out and we've got a form and this form only has the email i've set it to be 100 percent width the important part is how the heading and the form over there are grayed out because again if you go to the advanced tab and go to responsive they are not visible on the desktop or the tablet so i'm showing you some things on the desktop and some things on the mobile like at the moment on the desktop you don't see the subscription form because you might have had it somewhere in your page but I'm utilizing this extra space we've got with like this 
pretend off canvas drop down menu thing. And that's why I'm showing it there. So if I now just show you the preview, can you see how we have the logo? We have the menu. So the menu and this social sharing icon sits in a child container. But looking at that, you probably wouldn't know that. And there's a reason I did the child container, okay? And the form is not there. So a quick recap, on the page, your very first container after the header, you would put in move me as the ID. The second thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that, and you would have seen it when I was flicking through the screens, is that nav bar, which is basically going to be the one that pushes everything down, you are going to give this the ID of open menu. Open menu, one word, lowercase, okay? If you want to change it, do that. Just make sure you then reflect that inside the code. So from a desktop point of view, it's pretty simple. We've got all of our components in. Now let's go over to the mobile view. You see the logo. Obviously, there's the HTML. You now see the nav bar because it's responsibly showing for the mobile. We then have our container, the child container. That sits there. You can see the pink outline. You have your icons, you've got your heading and your form, and they are all now visible. Now, if I go to the menu, this is important. The menu is set to horizontal because when you go over to the desktop, it's going to be horizontal when you view it, whether you're on the desktop or even on the tablet. But on the mobile, I actually want it to be vertical. But if you change it here, so I go and do vertical and I go back over to my uh, desktop, it will do it for your desktop as well. So you now have to apply a little bit of code. And believe me, the code is really, really simple and easy as well. People might go, oh my God, what do I do? So you can see how it's already overlapping and it's all due to the magic of the HTML code. So I'm now gonna go into that. That is literally it. It's not a massive code, right? Let me explain it. And there's some bits I haven't mentioned yet because I wanna save it for the code because it ties in. This bit over here is gonna make your menu become vertical when you're on the mobile. And how does it know it's on the mobile? Because I've got max media, max width 767. So if your screen size is 768 or above, it won't apply any of this code. So it only applies it for the mobile. If you want to apply this for the desktop and the tablet and everything, just get rid of the max media bit. Or maybe you're going to flip it around and have it on the desktop and do something completely different for the mobile, then flip it to be a minimum width. But this controls it for you. What the code does is it takes the first container or the one with the ID move me, which is why you've got hashtag move me. If it was a class name, you would do dot move me, but I would recommend you use the ID hashtag move me margin top minus 400. OK, so if I change this to be zero, watch what happens. See how everything just moves down. So now by adding in minus 400, it goes all the way up. Now you're probably wondering, how did you know it was 400? Let me bring back my structure. Did you notice the numbers over here? Container 450 and container 340. So when I was building it, I made sure I like measured it or I knew what the size was. So the child container is a height of 340. And you can even see the height over there. So the child container when you're on the mobile is 340. The entire parent container for the header, because it contains the child container as well, that is a total of 450, okay? But you noticed a value of 400. Well, I measured it and I checked, and it might be a trial and error for you. 50 pixels takes me up to just below here. Well, when I say just below there, it's the perfect height, really. So of that 450, this container here just needs to move up 400. If I was to go to my HTML code and I now said minus 450, can you see it's gone all the way to the top? And if I was to now change that to be 440, you can see it's not right. In fact, let's change the 430. It's not right at the top. You can see a bit of the logo there. So 400 was the perfect height because it overlaps the 450 but it gives me like a bit of breathing space at the top for me to show my logo, anything else I want, and of course the nav bar icon. So if the total height of your parent container was just 300, you might set that to be 250 or 260 or 230. You just gotta, you can see it on screen. That's what's really good about it. You, you adjust it and you'll see the movement. Transition speed, margin top 0.2 seconds. I did find with this particular method, if you made it slower, like 0.4, 0.5 or something, sometimes you had a little bit of a stutter effect, a really small one, okay? And if you look for it, you'll see it. 0.2, absolutely fine. Now you could use translate Y, instead of using the margin top. However, I found that did cause a few glitches in terms of the size of your items and when it touches the footer, sometimes you get a bit of a gap. 
And believe me, I spent hours and hours and hours and hours trying to solve it. And then in the end, I went, forget it. Just go back to margin top because it works. When I say it works, I'm not lying. I did test this out on my mobile numerous times, okay? So I didn't just rely on the preview screen. And the bit over here will change margin top, just optimizes the transition, okay? Again, just to make sure you don't get the stutter effect. Inside of the JavaScripty bit of the code, you only need to modify the hashtags if you're not gonna use move me for the first container or open menu for the icons. If you change it, just go through the code. And because it's not a huge code, it's really simple and easy to do. The only other things you need to modify is that if you've gone and put a 400 here, put the same value here, so minus 400 and minus 400 here, because what this is saying is that um, when you click it or the icon, this needs to go from minus 400 pixel to zero, because when you change this to zero, as I've just shown you, it goes down. Can you basically see what it's doing here? And then when you click again, I want it to go back to the minus 400. So this code is so wonderfully, beautifully simple to understand. If we go back to what I was trying to emulate, you can see what it's doing. And look, if you want to make it a taller parent container, so go for 500 or 600, so you got more breathing space, you can do. But imagine what you were doing with a pop-up or an off-canvas widget you could do here. And because it's on the same page, your SEO is maintained because that is the same menu that you are using on the desktop and tablet because it's sat in the child container. So you're not duplicating and having another WordPress menu and then you're responsibly hiding them because these were not hidden on the desktop or tablet. It's the same one. And, and now think outside the box. Imagine you've got a shop page and you want to add in a filter. You could add in a filter. I've done this in a header template, all right? So it repeats on every single page. If I go to the services page, this is now the services page. This is the home page, right? Look, I go to services, that's the top of it. This is the move me container, okay? So I'm not lying to you about the fact of how easy it is. You click it, it moves down, you go over to the home page. You could have a shop, right? Or a product or whatever, maybe a shop page. And you could use this as a container on the page as well, maybe. So it doesn't have to be in the header template. And that could contain your filters. And because it's a container on the page, it will obviously filter the shop on your shop page. Maybe you've got a very detailed light -like filter system and you don't want to have it taking up all the space at the top, but you do want to reveal it when you want to reveal it. I mean, I think this is so simple and easy to apply even though it took me like nearly 16, 17 hours of my life to get it to work right and be very simple. I prefer to make codes as simple as possible so that A, it's easy to understand and it doesn't scare you into applying. As long as you remember to do what I said with the move me for your first container, open menu over there, make sure you understand your value, utilize the child container and hey, you'll be absolutely fine. I'm Imran Web Squadron. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Never break, always fight, never quit. Do it right, play the game, win your life. Have no shame, there's no time for the pain.